Truck buyers don't put the Toyota Tundra as their number one choice. They go to Ford, they go to GM and Ram every single year. But that doesn't mean you should overlook this new Tundra. It came out for 2022 after 14 years on the market, never being redesigned. And what Toyota's done is pretty significant. New powertrains, aluminum body panels, better technology, that's a major one. And of course, better safety. So let's see what makes this Toyota a good value compared to the big three. Toyota has gotten into the habit of leaving old things as they are. The last gen Tundra was unchanged for 14 years. I was starting to wonder if they'd ever get around to making a new one. They finally did. And what you see here is so much better inside and out, and it's finally competitive with the rest of the segment. If you want a longer bed with the bigger cab, Tundra does it. A lot of competitors have a shorter bed when you opt for this full-size configuration. That's a nice thing. Now the double cab does offer an 8.1 foot bed, but only on the base trim. That's more of a work truck. You can get the double cab on the first lower three trims and everything else like this platinum and above, you're only getting the crew max, but it's still nice that you can choose a five and a half or the six and a half foot bed. Now let's talk towing and payload. 12,000 pounds is pretty good. 1,940 pounds max is also good for payload. I'm sounding like I'm not too excited because guess what? They are not class leading numbers. Certainly good. Nothing to write home about though. The Tundra comes in seven trims. So of course, seven different grills. This is the platinum. It's actually only the fourth trim. The 1794 edition and the capstone and the TRD Pro are all a little different looking and they're more expensive. This one's nice, got just enough chrome, a little darkened so it's not too over the top. You got the hidden LED lights that brighten up just like that. You don't even know they're there, but you definitely notice these headlights and the sequential turn signals. They got nice dot and line patterns on the side of them. There's exposed torque screws on the cooling fins. It's a nice looking truck and I think this look is gonna stick around for a while and it will look good for years to come. No more naturally aspirated V8, yes to a twin turbo V6 that in all trims is pretty powerful. Only the base model has slightly lower output, but this is the one you'll find most often, 389 horsepower and over 430 pound-feet of torque. They've all got 10-speed automatic transmissions. The iForce Max, that's a hybrid. So you get an electric motor and a nickel metal hydride battery. That's the old tried and true battery that's been running in New York City taxi cabs and Priuses all over the world. So it's very, very reliable. Unlike lithium ion, which sometimes has its issues in the cold. This one's very reliable and you get a ton more power and torque. But no matter which one you choose, you're getting a Tundra that's very capable and without any V8 or four cylinder options like the competitors. On certain Tundras, there's a special feature hidden in the back light. Tailgate release and a step. It's kind of nifty. It actually does help you get in, but it doesn't go back up. But on GM trucks, you got to do that manually. There's a 400 watt AC outlet, perfect for parties. There's adjustable cleats on this rail system, but they don't work as well as what I've found in the Nissan Titan. Not only are they harder to loosen, they have very specific tracks, so you can't just lock it anywhere on the rail. They're preset. Don't like that as much, but you do get LED lighting on the side. The Tundra's bed is a sheet molded composite with aluminum. That means it's basically fiberglass, some resin and aluminum together that make it very durable. You don't need a drop in or a spray in liner. And this one even comes with a big full size mat, something I usually don't see as a dealer accessory. The Tundra can help you tow. Not only does it have a smart backup system that can help steer it when you're reversing, but it has blind spot sensors that can automatically compensate for the added length. All you gotta do is hitch the trailer up, plug it in, you're ready to go. Plus this one has the optional tow mirrors with power extensions and a little light on the side for added visibility. Most pickup trucks give you a tiny piece of sliding glass. In the Tundra, you get the whole thing. It really is a breath of fresh air. The Tundra has a classic interior, some chunky looking air vents, a big screen that's nicely integrated, and lots of physical switches that feel very good. It's simple to use and lots of buttons everywhere mean you don't have to go into the touchscreen for everything. The only thing I don't like, the feel of the window switches and the stalks. Otherwise, it's nice with this blue stitching and leather interior. The seat cushions in the backrest are better than what I've sat in Ford and GM trucks. It's more comfortable back here. I also got ventilated and heated seats back here. 
sunshades. But here's the issue. From a practical standpoint, this drivetrain hump really inhibits a flat loading floor. All the other trucks offer that, so when you have these seats folded up, you can load big cargo in here and not have it shift, and that's kind of a demerit. Padding by the knees on the dash, it's just so much nicer and softer in here than the last generation Tundra, which was so hard and brittle. Everywhere you touch, it just feels pretty good. I appreciate Toyota designing a center cubby that doesn't just open. You have a little small container here, a tray here that slides. If you just need a little small item here. And if you open the whole thing, it's actually on multiple tiers. Coins, remember that? We actually used to pay with coins to pay for tolls and parking. That's still available. USB ports and just different shelving. The only downside that I see is that you can't use the entire space to put something really tall. Base Tundras come with an 8-inch screen running an older piece of Toyota software, but this one is the 14-inch, and everything is large. Some people say the type is too big. I say I can read it. Not just because I'm getting older. Guess what? You can actually use this thing with a voice assistant, which is nice. There is a volume knob. I wish there was a seek knob. There isn't, so you have to go in here, tap that, and that's how you get to your stations. Actually, sorry, that's the wrong one. It's this one. Not quite as intuitive as actually having a fixed knob or some buttons here. These climate controls are good, but during the sunlight, you cannot see anything up here. It's not backlit during the day. That's my only problem. What I do like, though, is that everything else is really intuitive, and this works so much faster than before. While I had this truck, it actually had some wireless updates going through to improve some problems that it had that Toyota discovered, and now, Picture perfect. The cameras are cool. This is a rotating 360 degree image, and if you want to have some fun, you can change the paint color. It's a lot cheaper than putting on a wrap on this whole vehicle, right? The camera's just okay quality. Considering the resolution of this screen, they could be better, but I do like the front views, the rear and the side for the vehicle. That's all nice. You can change the lines and you can have this come on automatically. So it actually does do a lot, but they're just not as clear as they really should be. This all digital instrument panel is optional and it has some extra features. You can see all the audio and vehicle settings. All your trailer information is very easily and accessible. This is a little harder to read and I wish Toyota would clean this up. This is how it used to be years ago. But once you go into the settings, you can change things. For example, pitch and roll, if you wanna see that information, and if you want to see more information like the transmission oil temperature, things like that are very useful while you're towing so things don't go into the red zone. And you can change what the tachometer and speedometer look like, for example. But this system doesn't quite have the customization I was expecting, especially in a brand new product. So I think if you stick with the standard analog gauges, you're not missing too much. Adaptive cruise and rear emergency braking, lane tracing assist, that comes standard on every Tundra. But what isn't, and unavailable, a hands-free driving system. You don't get luxury features like massaging seats. You also don't get the innovation that Ford has, for example, where there's an onboard generator, not even in the hybrid version of this. And that's too bad, because I really would like to see Toyota do more with the Tundra. The old Tundra never lacked for thrust and acceleration. They had a really big V8 naturally aspirated, it sounded a whole lot better. I remember one of the last ones I drove was the TRD Pro, and it had that open exhaust. This new V6, it sounds okay. It actually sounds pretty snarly in here. Some of that is synthetic, it is piped through, but some of it is just good old fashioned mechanical noise. Either way, there's a ton of power, and now with the new 10-speed automatic transmission, this new Tundra is noticeably quicker. Off the line, mid-range. It doesn't necessarily get much better fuel economy in the real world. I've been averaging around 15 to 16. The EPA cycles are notably higher. You can see those numbers. In the real world, it's one of those things again. Very big vehicle, smaller engine has to work harder. It's the same across the board if you're looking at a GM Turbo 4 or Ford's Turbo V6. Very similar. But in terms of response, this thing is quick. There's actually a Sport Plus mode. And a Sport, but <laughs> Sport Plus. Some Lexus models don't even have that. <laughs> it's kind of funny that it's 
in a Tundra. There's no paddle shifters in the Tundra. And before you say, well, there shouldn't be, it's a pickup truck. There's a Sport and a Sport Plus mode and a separate S mode for the transmission. And the way it behaves, there could be paddle shifters. This engine doesn't have a very high red line. It actually red lines just before 6,000 RPM. But this 10 speed is really good. I would say compared to the GM and Ford 10 speed, that is a shared transmission that they both co-developed. This one doesn't clunk at all at lower speeds, which does happen with that transmission. That's my only fault with the GM and Ford one. This Toyota one, a lot better. Steering, it's nothing to write home about. There's still a lot of slop off center. Ford and GM and Ram are all doing a better job at having these light duty trucks feel more like crossovers and SUVs. But I will say that the body roll and the pitch very much controlled in this new Tundra. It doesn't feel as big as it used to, even though we're talking over 220 inches of total length. This is the six and a half foot bed with this crew max. And it feels really good despite these optional tow mirrors. It's the only thing that makes this truck feel wide as the lane. Without them, I gotta say, like it feels more nimble than a lot of the other competitors, simply for just size alone. Even if it's just slightly narrower in width, that's all it takes with these full-size trucks to just feel a little more at home on these narrow roads that well, a lot of people live on. When you're up to speed, everything is pretty quiet. Today is an unusually windy spring day, so I'm noticing that as you would in any vehicle. But ordinarily, this is pretty quiet. I think among the segment, it's good. Definitely not the quietest out there. I think Ram and Ford are doing a better job with insulation. Even GMC, the Sierra Denali, definitely feels quieter than this Toyota, but this is so much quieter than the old Tundra. Know that. A big improvement beyond just the engine is the rear suspension. So instead of leaf springs, you're getting coil springs with a multi-link setup that's just like what you'll find in the Ram 1500. The F-150 doesn't have that. That means it's a little more controlled. It rides better, certainly smoother with no load in the back, but I don't think the Tundra is quite damped as well. Even though there's an air suspension on this platinum trim, which self levels, you can also change the height manually if you're loading or unloading, attaching a trailer. It's not quite as composed as the Ram, and the Ram comes with four corner air suspension, not just the rear. So if you order a Ram like that, the ride is even more serene. But in general, and I can dial this back to normal and even go into comfort, this does have adjustable dampers, and there's a noticeable difference when you're in that normal or sports setting. In the comfort setting, you get it kind of wallowing like a sailboat a little bit more. That's where the Lexus quality comes in. It's not uncontrollable, but when you're on some undulating roads where they're pitching up and down, the Tundra is not as composed as even the F-150 with the leaf springs in the back. You can't get one in a diesel. You don't have as many powertrain choices as you do with the domestic trucks. And quite frankly, I'm surprised that Toyota still develops and sells the Tundra because it hardly sells any. When you look at what the F-150 or the Silverado sell in a single year, it would take Toyota about seven years to catch up what they do in just a single year. But there is a very big devoted fan base for Toyota trucks. And let's be real, Toyota reliability is a real thing. There's something to be said about that. You can go on owner forums and see all sorts of problems with a lot of the competitors, especially in their first and second model years, but you rarely, if ever, find that on Toyota forums. The Platinum trim I'm testing does not have multi-terrain select. It doesn't have a lot of the off-road features, not even off-road software driving mode here that I can select. It's all on-road. So if you really want those features, you can upgrade. There's a TRD off-road package on certain models, a full TRD Pro. You get lifted, clearance, all the other stuff. If you want to know how those systems work, you can watch my review of the 4Runner. 
Same systems, different truck. But the Tundra's gonna be fine for light duty off-roading. There's no automatic switching for four-wheel drive, so you got two high and four high. You have to select that manually. You still get a limited slip. For most purposes, this will be fine, but if you want the tires and the skid plates, all that fun stuff straight from the factory, just know that there are other options that you can order. The 2023 Toyota Tundra starts at 37865 for the base SR. My Platinum, which is the fourth of seven trims, was 68424 with destination. That might sound high, but it's pretty cheap when you consider other competitors. A Ram 1500 Limited is about eight grand more with similar options. Price out an F-150 Platinum and you're talking $6,000 more. The Silverado 1500 High Country, about three grand more. The only truck that comes close and a little less is the Titan Platinum Reserve. You're getting a lot of truck for the money. I like the Tundra better than the Titan, but not better than the American Big Three. It simply does not have the class leading performance and towing and payload and all the different configurations, all the technology available. Those trucks, they're a lot more expensive. So if you don't need all that, the Tundra offers a lot for the money and it has Toyota reliability. And that says something because you know this thing is gonna last even if it doesn't offer everything and all the goodies that the other guys have. So what do you think? Go to cargurus.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're gonna have more reviews just like this. We'll see you next time.